Let's take a look at the Data Store Administration tool. So from the desktop, you can see that I've already installed my Data Store Administration tool. Double-clicking on the icon opens the Data Store Administration tool, and actually on my other screen here, so I'll just bring it across. And it allows me to create a new data store or connect to an existing one. If I'm already connected to a data store, I can detach it from the data store administration tool, and I have the ability to save a connection file, which I would distribute to all case or users in the office that need access to the data store database. Now, before creating a data store, we should ensure that each person who will be attached to the state data store has read, write, and delete permissions for the directory and server where the data store will be located. Now let's click create for a moment. We can either create a new X-based data store or a SQL data store. SQL Server is recommended for large offices where you have more than 50 users or for any office that has an existing Microsoft SQL Server installation. SQL Express is recommended for medium-sized offices, less than 50 users, that do not have Microsoft SQL li Server license. Also, for offices whose users will be connected to the data store over low bandwidth or an unreliable network, such as wireless or WAN. Now, smaller offices that do not have a SQL installation may want to use the X-based database for the data store. However, if you have more than 25 people in your office that will be connecting to the data store, we do recommend using SQL Express as a minimum. It's also important to note Windows 8 users who are setting up a SQL data store will have to use the SQL Express 2008 or higher, which can be downloaded via the website for SQL. I already have both an X-based data store and a SQL data store on my computer, so I'll not be going through the process of creating either one of these today. However, the wizard will walk the IT administrator through the creation of your data store step by step, and it's fairly easy to follow those steps. So instead, I'm going to click Cancel, and I'm going to go over to Active Directory under Properties. The administrator login is referring to a caseware working papers administrator. So I'm going to log in using my default administrator information and click OK. Now, when we're populating the user list, we're looking to bring the information into the data store. So when the data store is first created, it contains one user, the administrator SUP, whom you just saw me log in as, with the password SUP as well. And we should note that it's lowercase on the password. Subsequent users can be imported in one of the following ways. We can do an Active Directory import. We can also go to the maintenance area and look at an import option under maintenance. We'll see that a little bit later today. Legacy import from previous working papers versions is also available, which is covered in the working papers help topic, adding user records from previous versions of working papers. Now, we're going to note a couple things here. In general, a firm will do either an Active Directory import, legacy user list, or an import through the maintenance option. It's not necessary to import a user list. Users may instead be added manually as described in the working papers help topic creating a new user, and we'll look at how to do that when we get into working papers in a little while. The Active Directory import allows users contained in the Windows Active Directory to be imported into the working papers user list. In addition to the username, additional information, such as the user's last name, will also be brought in. A user can have one ID and password that logs him or her into the firm's network and automatically authenticates the user when he or she logs into case or working papers. So I'm going to click Synchronize with Active Directory right now. And the Active Directory import will appear, which allows users contained in the Windows Active Directory to be imported into the Working Papers user list. In addition to the username, additional information such as the user's last name will be brought in. The user can have one ID and password that logs him or her into the firm's network and automatically authenticates the user when he or she logs into Working Papers once again. The data store can manage users in conjunction with Windows using the LDAP protocol to check the user's login and workstation hostname for logins. In previous versions of working papers, the maximum length of the hostname was 15 characters. Since many complex hostnames were too long for this field to accommodate, hostnames up to 260 characters can now be handled when validating Active Directory logins. This change should be able to accommodate almost any required hostname during user login validation. Selecting the users under the synchronized column will bring their information into the data store database. 
and we just check off whomever that we wanted to bring in. So I'm going to bring in the top three users here as I bring them in. As I'm bringing them in, they're going to be brought in as active users, and we have some password features available, so I can force them to change their password the first time they log in, and their default offline password will be TAE. We can also check to see if a password is set for a particular user. Right now, that is not set. Now, I'm not going to force these passwords to be changed at this point. I may also want to import the user initials and import the user's middle name. At this point, once I've got all my selections, I can click OK. And it very quickly brings in the information from Active Directory into the Caseware Data Store database. Now, there are some other settings, so let's have a look at those. They allow us to see the database ID and security ID, control how often the data store updates, our personal data store. Right now I've got it set to only on program startup, but I could refresh it every 5, 15, or 30 minutes if I wanted to. It also allows us to specify what is being shared to the data store. So I'm tracking, but I'm not sharing with the firm, or I can disable tracking, or I can track and share with the firm. And there's several options available to at the bottom here as well, including require login for Tracker. So if I open up Tracker, it will ask me for my username and password. Performing the login after the client files are uncompressed. The login is typically required before you uncompress the files so that you don't uncompress the file and allow a user to get at the files through Windows Explorer accidentally. And we can also use a personal store image right here. Moving down to maintenance, here we can resync, pack, repair, export, and as was mentioned earlier, we have the ability to import from previous versions of working papers. This is all covered once again in working papers help topic, adding user records from a previous version of working papers. With my data store created and the connection file saved, I could exit the data store administration tool and focus on creating my global security profile. To save the connection files, like you see up here, on the Create and Connect, we have the Save button, which would then ask me where I would like to save that connection file. I did take the liberty of renaming one of the connection files so I can differentiate between my SQL data store and my XBase data store on my desktop. That's really all there is to the data store administration tool, so I'm going to close that right now, and we're going to go over to Caseware Working Papers.